Welcome back to another episode of Developing the Leader Within Podcast. I'm Enrique, and today I have Andrew Appleton with me. Now, let me tell you, Andrew meets you at the intersection of creativity and life engagement. His passion is to guide others in their personal and professional journey. And he believes for each person, no matter their background, race, mistakes, successes, or, or radical uniqueness, deserves the right to participate in the world around them. Andrew, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you with me. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. And man, that I just read that actually today. Uh, some of those words that you just said back to me. And you forget sometimes when you get so in the weeds, in the details, you forget the purpose, the why, and you just helped remind me of that intersection of why we have the right to participate in the world around us. So thank you for having me, uh, allowing me to share some of my purpose. Outstanding. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Now, folks, we're going to be talking about leadership and your voice. And if you don't believe that your voice matters, then this, you, you're the person we want to talk to, actually. <laughs> so uh, because every voice matters. And before we get into leadership and your voice, uh, Andrew, tell us a little bit about you. All right. Um, well, I, I guess I'm probably best known for being in the military. So I am a Marine Corps veteran, once a Marine, always a Marine. I was enlisted, uh, became an officer. I was a crew chief on Huey helicopters, uh, became an accounting officer for Quantico, Virginia. Uh, did a little bit of, of legal case writing uh, during my last part. Uh, I was in about 12, 12 years, all in all. Uh, grew up in Kansas City area, went to school at K-State. Uh, accounting, business major, uh, always been an entrepreneur. Uh, so that life of like just chasing ideas and trying to bring them to light to solve a problem. And normally it's a problem that I encountered and then solved, you know, a platform around it. And so I live now in DC, um, right down from the Capitol. So I love living in our nation's capital. I love to go and do my three mile run around the capital and down by the harbor and really enjoy the sights and, and the people and the excitement and the engagement that that DC brings. And so, and now I'm just, you know, kind of midlife and just trying, like you said, bring a voice to a lot of folks that aren't speaking up or their voice isn't being heard. And so, in my midlife here, that's one of my goals is to do that. And a great purpose and passion, because we do know that there are a lot of voices that are marginalized, right? That are set aside and, and just basically silenced. And, and for those of you listening to us today, as we discuss this topic of leadership and your voice, let me remind you how much you do matter. Mm -hmm. Let me remind you how powerful your voice truly is. Uh, because we're going to be exploring this topic and how leaders can help. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Andrew, uh, what, what was the purpose? What was your, your mindset around Parade Deck, which we're going to talk about, uh, a platform that you've created? Uh, and tell us a little bit about Parade Deck. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, I'm excited. I just really just got excited. Um, just again, you brought back a lot of my my why of, and it's called liberating people, liberation, and not it's not my job to liberate someone. It's my job to to guide them, to be with them during that journey, and they've got to liberate themselves, and they've got to forgive their oppressor, and we can definitely talk about that in a little bit. But that's where it really. Uh, you know, the, the, the epiphany for people is when they can forgive those who have oppressed them and then finally hear their own voice. And so providing the evidence to that is something that I love to do and teach others to do. So we'll get back to that, though. But Parade Deck, um, ParadeDeck.com. So the name um, from the military, specifically the Marine Corps, Everything important happens on the parade deck. And for you civilians listening, it's basically a big parking lot with no cars. Uh, you know, and it's perfectly paved and it's usually black asphalt and graduations happen there, promotions happen there. 
And you don't walk on that sacred ground unless it's important. And that is why I created Pray Deck, because I feel there are so many people out there that have something very important to say, and there's not a place for them that they're being heard consistently uh, with those who need to hear that message. And so that's why I really created Pray Deck. Um, I had been doing live uh, Instagram um, interviews. And when I started to do that, maybe about four or five months ago, I thought like, how are people even knowing I'm on Instagram? You know, I have all these followers, but how do they know when I'm going to go live? Now, I will say Instagram does have a scheduler now, um, about the same time I created Pray Deck. So people that are following or have their notifications set that, you know, they want to know when I come live, obviously they get alerted. But other than that, you know, just whoever happens to be on is going to listen uh, to whatever I, you know, I'm talking about at the time. So that's really what pushed me to create Pray Deck. And Pray Deck, uh, if you remember back in the day of the TV guide, right? Um, but back then we had ABC, NBC, CBS, right? Very few channels. But now with the fog of social media, we've got hundreds of channels, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, you know, Spotify, you know, all of these channels to choose from and creators have to figure out where am I going to put all my content? Where are my listeners? And the listeners are, what platform do I want to use? And so Pray Duck is that TV guide for social media. So we bring all the channels together. So for a creator such as yourself, and you have a beautiful Pray Deck uh, page, I will tell you, when I pop that up, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is beautiful. So you have your master page with all of your social media links, your bio, your picture. So all you really have to say is go to Parade Deck, here's my link and you'll find me. Whatever platform you're comfortable with, here it is. And by the way, here's the schedule of events and the platforms and when they're gonna be on. So that's why I created Parade Deck and that's the essence behind it. Uh, and now we're just fine tuning it and bringing creators onto the platform. And the important part about that, and you and I had this discussion the other day, we are a community. You know, there are creators. And when I say creator, anybody who has a message, right? Anybody who has a voice, anybody that has something to say, that's a creator. And they may be on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or all of those different channels. Um, but we're all a community. And so someone that may come on to the Pray Deck to listen to me might also see your content or they might see the VA's content. And so now we're collaborating and we're building a stronger exponential community of listeners. And so that's another awesome part about the Pray Deck is everybody is there sharing content and no one is capitalizing, you know, I've got 5 million followers on Instagram, who cares? You know, we've got 10 million people on Parade Deck, you know, and we're going to share these eyeballs. And I'll tell you that the, the way you've structured the platform, I like the fact that you can get to all the things right mm -hmm. off of one sheet and not only be accessible to the listener, whatever platform they may choose, but also have, you know, for those that do not know what TV guide used to, used <laughs> yeah. to be, right? because there is a generation that yeah. did not see TV guide or, or has not seen TV guide. Um, it is a great way to catalog each of these creators and their channels to a way where they can just pick and bam, they go right to the content, they get mm -hmm. to consume the content in whatever uh, flavor it is that is presented. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only that, but also go look at somebody else, which is I like, uh, you know, part of the TV guide philosophy was, hey, I don't care what channel it is. This is what's happening during the day. This right. is what's happening in the afternoon. This is what's happening at night. And you could actually get on there and pick and choose what you wanted to do. 
uh, all from already curated list of creators and shows all in one sheet. And I, so I, I really appreciate that piece of parade deck and what it actually gives. So when, when you went into creating this, uh, tell us, tell us what you want to see. Tell us what you want to see. Cause there's a, there's a shell there. There's a, there's a platform, there's stuff that's going on, but what mm-hmm. do you want to see out of parade deck, uh, for the creators? Well, I, you know, and I'm glad you asked that. Cause I was thinking of all these features we've built like all creators, you know, we build way more than probably people are ever going to know the platform does. Uh, but it has so many features like built in alerts. Uh, you know, once someone follows you, you know, we're always used to like subscribe to YouTube, follow me on Facebook, you know, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. That's all good, but you can follow that creator on parade deck one time and then get alerts for everything. And so once they engage with you on parade deck for even just one event, they're going to start getting alerts on all your events that you choose to put in there. So one of the things I'd like to see in the feature we already have is if it's a live event or pre-scheduled, it will actually go live on our broadcasting network. Now that's kind of a fancy word for me to say, but we wanna be a broadcasting network for this content, meaning that just like TV, it's live, you know, or if you go to Netflix or Apple TV and you kind of go through all these live events or scheduled events, they just automatically pop up. And so we want to take that content, whether it's original from our side uh, or it's you know one of your shows and it comes live, people are able to actually go and see live events at the time they come up. And so my goal is really, you know, we have about 1.9 million available eyeballs right now on the parade deck. And that's a culmination of all of our creators. My goal is to get that to 10 million by the end of March, you know, so that we have 10 million followers of a community all coming to one place to see what content is available. And then hopefully bring those that maybe their voice is a little bit softer to a safe, secure place to say, we value your voice. We value the story that you have. It is important. And here's a platform where you can share it and maybe you don't have a hundred thousand followers. Maybe you have 10. Well, we're going to introduce you to millions and we're going to make that. And you and I talked about that. It, you know, Gary V talks about that. There are no shortcuts, right? Uh, I know you've been doing this for a long time. You have over a hundred episodes and you're still like, you know, what's the, what's the secret to this? And, you know, so I do want to provide a little shortcut. Like, I do want to provide like, hey, we actually have people that are willing to watch your content and you don't have to do the work to get them. So if there is a little bit of a shortcut, that would be it. Well, what you're doing is you're exposing them to folks that are, would be inclined to listen to them anyway, but mm-hmm. they're already in a community, right? So exactly. you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it could be considered a shortcut, but what it is, is truly an exposure. You're exposing them to a community that's already waiting, waiting for them. Right. Um, and, and I'll tell you an example real quick, uh, Instagram. So if you tag somebody, you know, like in your story, then you want them to put that in their story. So then they get exposure to your audience. So it's really the same thing. We're really just tagging you on your behalf automatically and sharing it to a much larger community. And so that's a good example of, of what Prey Deck is. So let's talk a little bit about the importance of a voice because, you know, not everybody's creating. There, there are more consumers, right? Oh, yeah. Content consumers than they are content creators. Uh, so there's a, there, there's a still a lot of voices that are not being heard. There's a, there's still a lot of voices that are not creating. Mm -hmm. So what's the importance of a voice? And then secondly, why should they be created? Because I I feel like there should be a whole lot more people creating, Mm -hmm. uh, because stories from individuals are theirs and theirs alone. Right. Yep. 
Wow, that's uh, so many things going through my mind. You know, I'm going to start the, here and go backwards. But one of the challenges with social media is I think we're, we're taught that you have to have a lot of followers uh, or you have to have this many views or, or clicks or, or playbacks. And you measure yourself, measure yourself on that as success or failure. And so I think for one, creators go into it thinking, I'm going to give this a shot if I, if I don't hit these metrics, which it, it's good to have metrics, but you know, I'm going to quit and I'm, I'm going to give up. And so I think one thing is kind of take that off the table. It doesn't matter how many people you are you know, visually seeing, engaging with you, because I'll do a podcast and a live and maybe one person or three people. And I'll always tell my guests, don't pay attention to how many people are watching. It doesn't matter. You know, I don't care if it's one or, or five million. What we're going to talk about is really important. And the person that needs to hear it will hear it either tonight or a year from now. The second thing is content is so consumable so quickly and we, all, we've, we often forget about it. So people will, like you, you have a hundred episodes or plus, you know, and I'm sure that your first podcast had just a import, as important information as the last podcast you did yesterday. But the one that gets the, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? Like, so it's, the, what's now? What's today? What's the news today? I don't want to see a year ago. So I think one of the things I want to try to do is kind of bring those archives back out and available. And so one of the things on Parade Deck is on your creator page, you can actually just start scrolling through all the archives. And it's, an, it's such a nice format that something's going to catch my eye and be like, oh, I want to listen to that, you know. And so, you know, it starts to build up that algorithm of now maybe some old content, you know. So I think that old content needs to be, you know, unarchived at some point. And I think social media does a good job, bad job of dismissing some amazing content. So I wanted to say that, but a voice, you know, we're, when you're a child, when you're, when, you, when you're an infant, your vocabulary and the number of words that you're gonna know as an adult is established during those first few months and years of your life. And it's the voice of your mom or your dad or your grandparent reading to you, teaching you these words and when you become an adult, or, you know, even a young, you know, young adult, you actually have words to use. And a lot of the challenge with, with our criminal justice system and people who are oppressed is because they came from poverty. You know, the social economic divide made a disadvantage of their ability to learn words. And when you don't learn words, you cannot put together sentences in order to have that effective voice of how you feel inside. So one, it's important that we teach our young words and so that they have a, I mean, literally a child that's read to every day versus not will have a doubled amount of words and vocabulary when they're a young adult. So it's dramatic on just our ability to communicate. And when you cannot communicate effectively, you will default to sarcasm, humor, self-deprecation. And that's when people start to confuse it with you're disrespectful. And that's where voices start to disappear. So a voice is important because it tells you how I feel, what I need, how I feel about you, what I need from you. And I know that I kind of grew up in you know, a wonderful family, but we did not communicate as much as we should have about emotions. We didn't use the words, I love you. We didn't use those words of affirmation. We did more by example. And it took a lot for me to be able to overcome that and tell my son daily, I love you. You are important to me, you know, and be able to be vulnerable. So a voice allows us to be vulnerable in a safe environment and manner where we can communicate with each other. So it's probably a big, long philosophical answer for you, but <laughs> no, that was, that was great. You know, and as, as you was talking, I'm, I'm thinking about my son mm -hmm. 10 years old 
he uh, he has always been homeschooled. All of, you know, my my two boys have always been homeschooled. This younger one has taken more of a liking to education than the older one, but his speech and his clarity of thought, his way of expressing himself, mm-hmm. blows my mind at times because he has a voice. He knows he has a voice and he has the vocabulary to go with that voice. And it is astounding. Sometimes Mm -hmm. the things that come out of this 10 year old little mouth. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, he knows exactly what he's saying and why he is saying it. And he uses it. So to your point, right. To your point. I'm seeing it on in my household at uh, at this 10-year-old uh, boy with this 10-year-old boy that is undoubtedly going to be an adult that commands authority and commands his circle by his voice and I can see it I can see it today yeah, I have a 13 year old and I just asked him the other day how's your reading going and, oh I know I don't like to read you know and I and I, you know, I tell him, like, the less you read, the less words you'll know. And if you if you can't communicate with others as an adult, you're going to lose out. You're not going to be able to ask for a, a, a promotion. You're not going to be able to ask for a raise. You're not going to be able to to get to, you know, to get what you need because somebody's going to outspeak you. Um, and so, you know, probably put too much pressure on him. But, you know, I read to him. I, I still try to like, hey, let's read a book together. But he lives in Denmark and he speaks Danish. So he's reading Danish books. And uh, I'm like, I don't know Danish. So, it's, My wife is a, a, an avid reader. Mm-hmm. I'm an avid book collector. I'll, I'll leave it at that, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I have tons of books. I have you know. tons of books. Yeah. Uh, and I do get to read them, but not like my wife. My wife will eat a book, right? And, and, and just go for the next one. And she has taught and disciplined our children to read, to expand their mind, to expand their vocabulary. I'm one that by virtue of poor leadership, but we're going to be talking about the how leadership can actually get into this mix of making sure your voice is heard. But because of poor leadership in my early years, mm-hmm. I became best friends with a red book called the Webster's Dictionary. Now, today, they may have different colors. Back then, it was red, and you knew it was red, right? So, and I became very intimate with this book because uh, the the challenge at the time was that, hey, I grew up in the Bronx, so I had an accent. I was Puerto Rican. I had an accent. You know, so it, it, it was picked at, and so I, I decided early on that I would become best friend with this book and I was going to learn words that they did not know. And then I was going to use them. You know, it was kind of like retaliatory, but <laughs> yeah, I love it, it. it is what it is. And, and that's what, and that's how that became about, but it also became uh, a benefit to me because I instantly, when I would speak, and use these words that were appropriate and in context, mm-hmm. but made sense and became and, and 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 made me look a whole lot more developed than the than even seniors around me. Mm-hmm. It actually opened a lot of doors for me to progress. People mm-hmm. would like to they they wanted me in their circle. They wanted me to speak on their behalf. It, it, it opened doors like you wouldn't believe, right? And so for all of those out there listening right now, not only is it important for you to share your voice, your God-given voice, but to share it in a way where it will be heard, mm-hmm. that it will be accepted, right? Because there there are a lot of voices that you just don't want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately right but in this case leadership has a role in ensuring that 
their people's voices are amplified because when you are a worker and you don't have a position where you can have a platform to speak from, Mm -hmm. then the leader has a role in that. So can you share with me some ways leaders can help amplify voices? Yeah. Um, you know, I think one thing that <clears throat> limits a voice, and especially on social media, is bullying, people that bully. And I don't, I don't get bullied too much. I rarely do people say negative things back to my comments, but I have peers, uh, very well-respected peers that will get bullied by their peers. And, and I will say, you know, they're military and they should know better. And they say very negative, derogatory things to disrupt, you know, that person's ability to share their voice. So as a leader, and uh, uh, Cesar Chavez says, once you educate, once you're educated, nobody can uneducate you. And so I think as a leader, you've got to teach your, you know, the people that are under you how to, to respect and how to be able to have a conversation respectfully, even though they disagree with the topic. And unfortunately, there's a lot of culture or racism or, you know, male, female, uh, um, you know, uh, conflicts, you know, on social media, and, and they'll pick those things you know, like you're a, you're a woman, you know, or you're a female, or you're you're this or you're that, um, and I just don't agree with you because of that. So I think it's it's educating, you know, especially our youth, but educating those under us how to communicate effectively by supporting each other. And so, I'm not sure if that that's an exact answer, but I just try to be an example. I just try to be an example of always. I had a colonel tell me one time, find 99 ways to say yes, one way to say no. How can I listen to this conversation? How can I listen to this person's opinion? How can I at least reframe it? How can I agree with something that person is saying instead of immediately going to a negative context? And that's what we do because we see it on on media all the time. You know, there is not one news channel I can watch that they start with 99 positive things that someone said, and then maybe they have a negative. They always go to 99 horrible things, and then maybe they'll say something nice about them. So I think if they put into practice teaching people, reframe, listen differently, put that in a different context. You know, one example is kind of an odd one, but let's say somebody cuts you off in traffic and they're driving maybe erratically and you get all mad, you're honking, it just ruins your entire day. You know, we used to think like, maybe they have someone that just got into an accident. You know, maybe they're late for their job and this is the last time they're going to, you know, they're going to get fired and they've got three kids and they're, they're a single parent and, you know, they have no money in their bank account. So I try to reframe, you know, the situation and just kind of have a feeling of like, I don't know the entire story and I'm going to find a way where I can relate. I think that's fair. And so I think as a leader, you have to emphasize. And I do think, especially in our military, they are becoming better and better and better at that in teaching, you know, young lieutenants and enlisted uh, on how to listen and how to communicate. And the one last point I'll make, um, to be an effective leader, you have to have one thing. And I, I won't put you on the spot here, but what do you think that one thing is? To be an effective leader, you have to have one thing. I would say empathy. Empathy. You have to have a follower. You have to have a follower to be a leader. Because if no one is following you, and I quote this from someone else, you're just a lone nut. You're just someone out there just trying. But as soon as you get a follower and then somebody else follows, now you have a a, a revolution. You've got a party. You've got something going on now that people want to be a part of. But to get that follower, you got to have respect and you got to have trust and you got to have integrity and credibility. And it doesn't mean that you have to do everything right all the time. I mean, gosh, if somebody judged me on my past, you know, they probably would never follow me. 
But every day I get up and I say, I'm going to do something better. I'm going to do something decent. I'm going to follow somebody and give a voice to them. And then that's how I create followers. And it's, it's interesting that you would uh, uh, say that because sometimes I say a leader must lead without a follower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you do. I yeah. think, yeah. Right. So, but, but to, to your point, leadership doesn't really begin in, in external fact way in an external way without someone following you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, leaders, if you cannot lead yourself, I hope you're not <laughs> making people follow you. Right. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things in leadership and how that's practiced, there must be someone following your lead. And so that is what truly makes a, a, a person a leader, uh, hopefully will willingly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can come to mind and, and and say like, I would follow this person. I would follow this person. I mean, I have a list I could give you that there is no doubt I would follow them. I, I wouldn't even ask twice, you know. But then I have some people like, eh, like if if I'm in charge of navigation, I would not follow me. I would just tell you that. So, you know, if I need to get somewhere, I'm going to find somebody that can read a map, you know, and, and not decide, you know, I'm the guy in the Uber that tells them where to go. Like, oh, no, no, don't follow the directions. You know, I know a better way, um, you know. And so I think as a leader, you need to teach people how to identify leaders. Like, how do I identify these peers or, or your, your, uh, your leadership uh, that, that you can trust in following them? And I think, that's going to be based upon the evidence presented of their past performance, their current performance, what they've overcome. Uh, you know, I work with a lot with uh, recruit families that have recruits at boot camp, and I tell them, "Listen, if your recruit doesn't make it, let's say they don't graduate, I would still hire them because of just the 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 the, the boldness that they took to even try." You know. Only one or two percent of our population even actually go to boot camp and try to join the military. So I'm like, it's really not a failure. And I think we need to get that word failure, you know, out of our vocabulary. There are setbacks, there are detours, there are some hiccups in the way things go, but we learn from it, we pivot. But when we get that failure in our head, like I didn't make it. No, you just didn't make it right there, but you're gonna kill it over here. You know, and I think, again, going back to the voice, we need to help help people identify what type of voice do you have? If you're going to be in a choir, you know, and you're a tenor and I put you in the, the bass section, you know, you're, you're probably not going to do too well. So we need to identify what what does your voice sound like? How do you harmonize? How do you harmonize with others to make our our entire message, you know, sound beautiful? You know, this, this week alone uh, has provided examples of leadership over this whole conflict in, uh, mm -hmm. and, and yep. going on in Ukraine, right? And you mentioned, hey, I, I'm sure you thought about somebody and say, yeah, I will find that man <laughs> had me in my living room talking about, I would go right now, <laughs> yep. be with that dude and fight right now. I would America, yeah, I will, I will go. And, you know, leaders have to provide that, that segue between thought and action mm -hmm. between a thought and a voice. And you mentioned earlier, right? Provide the opportunity to understand and start to unravel, uh, you, you know, your, your team's, uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. and their desires and as and maybe they can't explain it all the way but the leader should be able to say okay well let's talk about this let's mm -hmm. uh, let's let's unravel this where i can understand it because i am the person that can facilitate success here so i i could facilitate you getting what you're asking for so let's 
unravel this and it takes time, but the leaders, leaders seldom want to take that time, but it mm -hmm. is critical that we do if we want our folks voice to be heard. Yep. I now, was talking. To, oh, go ahead. No, no. And I was, I was finishing up there. <laughs> oh, I was talking to a Lieutenant commander who was charged with putting together the mentoring and coaching program for the Navy, for the entire Navy. And she went and I won't articulate it as well as she did, but she literally had three hats with tape on it. And one was like, when someone comes in for uh, their, their review, right, you're going in, uh, you're going to get feedback on what you've done, right, what you've done wrong. And, and that's a stressful situation. And so she uses this, these hats to identify the different roles that leader is going to play. And one is just the, the plain feedback, you know, well, hey, you didn't really do well here. You know, you could have done, you know, made the decisions better. And then they take that hat off and then they put the mentor hat on. And now it changes the whole environment. You've now given me access to a mentor, not someone who's judging or giving me this kind of harsh feedback that I really don't want to hear. Now you're saying, how can we, how can we overcome this? How can you do better next time? And you start that mentoring role. And then you take that hat off and you put your coaching hat on. What are some of the techniques that you would like to learn that I can teach you? And so by doing that, that trifecta of these different roles, you've made me feel so much more comfortable coming into your office. You provided me, again, I'll use that word access to, you know, a leader that knows how to distinguish between those three roles, allowing me the freedom to then start using my voice. Well, you know, I would really like to, to, to be able to take this class. I think I could perform a lot better if I knew a little bit more about project management or Microsoft. And so I love the way that she described it. And it's something they're rolling out literally to the whole Navy uh, based upon two years of her work. And the one thing that she made clear, it's not a program, it's an initiative. It's not a checkbox. And it's not something just for your higher ups, it's for everybody. Everybody can be, can provide feedback. Everybody can be a mentor and everybody can be a coach. Yeah. Those are, those things are important in the development of not only your team members, but the team as a whole uh, and the effectiveness of your command, right. Of your company, of your organization yeah. and imagine leadership in its entirety, whether, whether it was uh, military or civilian, if they would ad adapt, adapt and adopt yep. a process like this, it would facilitate a whole lot more for the team and the team members, uh, to, to be able to excel and, and, and what a organization would, you know, would we'd have if yeah. everybody was a, was actually getting feedback, but getting mentored and getting coached all throughout the whole life cycle of and all the layers of an organization. So that's, yeah. uh, that's great that, uh, that that's coming on board. Oh, I'm excited. And I think the other thing about leaders and I'm not judging anybody, I'm, you know, I mean, if you have a meeting with, you know, a subordinate or, or someone you're training or something like that, you should be the one that's doing the less, least talking. Uh, but I think a lot of leaders feel that they have to always have an answer. And you don't. I mean, I would rather have a leader just say, I'm not sure about that. Let's investigate that. But when you have someone that's always giving you the answer, their answer, you just, I just shut up. I just quit asking because it's no fun anymore. You know, and, and to be an effective follower, I want to have fun. I want to learn and participate and use my voice. But if your leader is always dominating because they feel like that's how they've been taught, then there's no communication, you know? And so one tool is to be able to create, you know, worksheet or a platform where, you know, and you said something earlier that really hits it. It takes a lot of time. And that's one thing that we seem not to have enough of. And, you know, we're so busy trying to get the bottom line and get into production and the innovation and all of that that we don't have time for, you know, the feedback, coaching, and mentoring. 
And so when it comes time for these reviews, it's usually just one-sided and useless. Uh, the Gallup poll puts people who are unengaged at work at about 75 to 80%, meaning that it, unengaged employees really don't find a purpose in going to work. So only 30% of our workforce is engaged. And I tell you, 99% of that is because of the leadership. And it's not that these are bad people. It's just, I'm not able to use my voice. My needs are not being reinforced. I'm doing my best, you know, and then yes, you're giving me my paycheck, but I need my needs reinforced. And so you got 70% of the workforce looking for other jobs, you know, so. Yeah. And, and, uh, I worked for a place and they specifically hired me to be a walkabout mentor. Oh, I, I was in from the bottom all the way up to the top. I would walk around all day long and I was accessible to all employees. And if they wanted to speak to me, they had the blank check from the CEO to go talk to Enrique and I would talk to them and I would mentor them, help them solve problems because everybody was so busy. Mm -hmm. that but they provided that for the organization and people flourished because they had an a uh, uh, basically an instant person there every time they needed something in terms of mentorship and guidance and things like that clarity hey we was at this meeting some you know the leader said this can you explain and and I was able to do all that. Wow. What was, I'm curious, what was the job title and where did you find it? Like walk about mentor. I think I'll play for that. I, I have clients that would love that. Like, where do I find that job? Well, it's funny because I, I still do that remote, but the, the, the job was titled executive advisor. Okay. Because I was part of the C-suite, but I, uh, at the advisement piece was for the entire company. I love that. I, I can just see you at a dinner party and everybody's like, I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm a walkabout mentor. Oh, what's that? I mean, you probably get all the attention. Like, um, uh, that's, that's interesting. You know, well, we need a walkabout mentor on our social media. Like, you know, if you got a challenge or a bully, come to me and I'll help you get through this, you know, um, because we do need a little bit of leadership on our social media. It, it, that's, that's correct. Now, I, I tell you, uh, Andrew, your platform is, is going to be the, the next best thing here. Uh, it is headed in a way, and I, and I love how you structured it. If someone wanted to find out more about Parade Deck, speak to you, maybe get you on their program, maybe, uh, get on the platform. How would yeah, they do that? Absolutely. Um, so, well, I'm not going to give the, the answer that everybody else, like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you're not going to remember that. Right. Uh, and it's just a waste of my breath to tell you all the channels you can find me on. So a, you can just find me on parade Uh, you can email me at Andrew at parade Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, under parade deck or just my name under LinkedIn. Uh, and just contact me. Uh, if you create an account, uh, definitely, you know, I'm, I'm the one that does customer service. So I'm a startup, you know, so we have a very small staff. Um, I mean, you had a question today and I hope I responded quickly. Um, you know, so it's important that you, you give us feedback and you get in touch with me, but the best way to, you know, just go to praydeck.com uh, or, or just email me at Andrew um, at praydeck.com. And we would love to have you. We would love not only is it your hub, but it's your voice also that we're giving out to other people. So when you host, at least now, while we're small, and I think I thank you for your optimism, um, but as we're small, we're able to promote all of our creators. So if you have a show coming up and you put it on there, I'm going to put it out there in all our social media, uh, and I'm going to try to get as many people as I can to come to the parade deck to, to view your content. Well, I, I'm, I'm optimist because, uh, it is truly 
a great platform. Folks, I encourage you to get on Parade Deck. Look around. See if it's something that you want to be part of. Um, uh, Andrew's inviting you. But there are a lot of, if if you're not a a content creator, there are creators on there covering everything from NFTs to finances to different uh, platforms, military, civilian. Uh, So you have a lot of things. Now there's leadership on there, right? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so it's gonna be it's gonna be growing, uh, and and if you enjoyed uh, all that we talked about, take a look at Parade Deck, and find out if that's a place for you, or at least if you can, hey, have somebody go on there and become part of it, folks. If you've enjoyed this episode and learned something interesting about the topic covered today, make sure to subscribe and let us know by leaving a comment on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, or Twitter right now. As a matter of fact, go to Parade Deck. <laughs> I'm on there, and you're going to you see, go. and you can do, you can uh, refer, write, look, whatever you want to do. We're always looking for new ideas and guests that we can add to our show. So if you know someone or have a topic that you would like featured on the podcast, we'd love to hear about it by emailing us at triadleadershipsolutions at gmail.com. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode where we dissect leadership from another angle. And as we like to end this show, success to you.